strengthening the connection within. And the whole purpose of this is that in the winter months, in it's interesting because we have passed the solstice, so the light is starting to come back in, but it's still a very internal time. And it's still dark, you know, the light and that doesn't balance for a few more months yet. And so this time we can become very overwhelmed, very lost, very um, off our center because we can feel the pressure of the, the darkness, of the void, of the unknown, of everything around us. And that's just seasonal. It's, it's nothing to sort of judge or anything. It's just, that's what winter's about. Winter's a time to go inner and to face your demons and to go, I've got the strength to get through this. Now this month in particular, it's a very interesting month because it's got a double 10. Okay, so the 10 for this year is in the heart number. And the 10 is all about the spiritual warrior. You know, it's about being able to do what you need to do regardless. It's about showing up. It's about keeping up, but it's about keeping up from the place of spirit. So keeping up, maybe a day of self-care. <laughs> keeping up, maybe saying no to so many commitments so that you can really focus on what's your highest priority at that time. And it's also a, um, it's also another number to this year and um, this month as well because when you get the seven of the month and the three of the year that comes to a ten. And the reason why we're talking about that is because that's really the underlying essence of strengthening your connection. Because that's what spiritual warriors are. Spiritual warriors have the ability to really connect into the supple communication and to allow their light and their radiance to shine and direct throughout their life and do what's asked. When spirit asks, they do. They may question it because the questioning is a part of the processing of understanding what is unfolding, but they do not argue with it. They do not um, complain. They really step away from the neurosis of the mindset and in the dark times the neurosis of our mind can really really take over so that's the part of the connection that this course this next 10 weeks is based around that connection to your spirit to your soul so that you have a clear understanding of how it operate how spirit operates through you because how it operates through you is different for everyone. And I think that's the beauty of Kundalini Yoga is that it's your own experience. And you sit on the mat and you close your eyes and you go in and you develop a deeper and a deeper awareness of how you commune, how you commune with yourself, how you commune with your higher self, how you commune with your ego, how you commune with your loved ones, how you commune with people at work. And through that awareness, you then get an understanding of what is being driven by this and what is being driven by the reoccurring patterns. Okay. And so with this course, it's about strengthening that connection. And the best way to strengthen that connection is through Kundalini. <laughs> So we're going to be playing around a lot this term with the flow of Kundalini energy. What is Kundalini energy? So keep really open, keep that communication going um, and touch base if you have unusual things happening, if you feel a bit funny energetically or if your mind's doing full on things or if you're getting the shakes, you're getting the hot flushes and all of these things, talk about it. 
because when you talk to about it with like-minded people, you start to understand that it's just a part of your process. It's how your Kundalini gets your awareness, gets your attention, how it clears the chakras, how it, it stimulates the ten yogi bodies. So that's what we're playing around with tonight. So tonight the whole purpose of the class is to really just tune in to this aspect of Kundalini and to prime the body and to experience the Kundalini energy so that you have like a benchmark and you'll notice that with Kundalini Yoga particularly, but with practices that awaken Kundalini energy. And I'm talking about practices, I'm not talking about emergency Kundalini awakenings where you freak out and stuff's going on. With Kundalini energy, when it's moved and played with, with practices that have got a lineage in ancient technology, what it does, it gently clears the blocks. It gently primes the system so that you can experience it in a way that it is comforting and a way that it is blissful. I remember Brie explained really beautifully once, if it feels good, if the heart's opening, if you feel bliss, that's Kundalini. If you're feeling freaked out, if there's a bit of pain, if there's tension, that's a block in the flow of the prana and the prana. And what can happen with these emergency wakings is that so many years or something has happened and they've put subconsciously very often so much attention has been put on blocking this energy that it, then it just can't hold it and it blows up. <laughs> with these practices, you'll feel it and it might you might only feel it in your heart. You may not get any higher with your Kundalini energy. It might stay there and it might need to stay there for several months, maybe even a few years, you don't know. But it will be a warming and a nourishing feeling. And the shifts will happen all of a sudden. All of a sudden you'll be crying in class and you'll have this you know, emotional outbreak and then you'll be laughing and then you'll finish class and you go, I've got no idea what that's about, but I feel lighter. And I know lots of you have experienced that <laughs> in these classes. And so the whole purpose, and Guru Singh, I was reading something from him the other day, it's with Kundalini Yoga, you want to, initially it's about awakening the Kundalini, but then it's about sustaining it so it can flow smoothly throughout your life, throughout your systems. So you just don't want it to go pink, and stay here, you want to then integrate it. And I know that all of you are on different levels and different processes and have been practicing different things for all different amounts of times. So I'm saying this because you know where your Kundalini is. And if you don't, you've got 10 weeks to really understand that. You know, and to realize that this is me, this is my process, this is my body, this is my system, and it is perfect how it is. And let's get to know it. So let's start. Resting your hands on your lap, palms facing up. <sighs> Closing your eyes, and dropping into the base of the body. And just take a moment, a moment to scan your energetic body. Don't worry about the mind, the mind's always busy. But how are the senses flowing through your body right now? Is there any heaviness? Is there any tingling? Is there warmth kind of stored in any parts of the body? Is there a resistance within the muscles somewhere? Is there a shallowness in the breath? Or is the breath able to deepen? Is there a pulsating anywhere within the body? And from this internal scan, Take your attention down into your heart space. Assist with this by squeezing the shoulder blades together, lifting the front of the chest, tucking the chin, making sure the neck is long and feeling the ribcage expanding in four directions. 
Then inhale and suspend where the intention is set. May I develop a deep awareness of the flow of my potential, the Kundalini within, allowing this to awaken, integrate and fine tune my life more than ever before for the benefit of all.